Hi everybody, hello, hello, hello. Welcome to our Sunday afternoon live. Um, doesn't seem to be very many of you here today, but that's okay. A nice little select group, that's fine. Um, I just wanted to show you before we get going, for the sake of Kiung, I think Nancy lives in Colorado, and Michelle Fenske, who actually lives in Colorado Springs, that I've got my Colorado Springs t-shirt on. How brilliant is that? I live in the middle of England. It means nothing to anybody, but it means a lot to me. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm wearing it. Right, let's get cracking with some stuff that's not so silly. <laughs> Janya had to work. Oh, no. That's awful. You like it, Keong? Huh? It's good, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Carol. Uh, right, so today it's a Timmy day. We're doing these two easy peasy journals. One is the blue one, and one is the Timmy one. Hi, Tammy. Um, and we really, as far as we'd got, was just to cover it. Fold the two flaps in on the outside. And if you're not sure what we've done, just have a look back through um, not last week's live, but the week before, where it shows you all the measurements and what to do and how to go on, etc. Uh, I made a bit of a blunder. It's supposed to have two flip flaps, but I forgot to put mine in. But that doesn't matter. So really, um, I haven't done anything to it apart from put that bit of paper on, which was the only bit that I wanted. I've left the back for the moment because it's always the bit that gets manky, brushing against my board. Uh, and I've left the front cover because I want to see what what the journal turns out to be before I do the front cover, really. Anyway, there we are. That's what we've got. Um, right, so what I've been doing this week... Oh, I'll tell you what, I'll show you this before we start. You've probably seen it, there's a video up of it, but it's the correspondence journal that I've been doing all week long. And the week before that. In fact, I've made three of these in total. Um, and... The first two have gone to uh, America. Uh, this one, I don't know where it's going to go because it hasn't sold yet. It's in my Etsy store if you're interested, want to go and have a look. So it's a folio, it's on magnets, it closes on magnets quite nicely. Um, and it's got this lovely... I know I use this a lot, this device here. I use it a lot. But that's because I like it. I just think it looks really, really nice. Uh, and this collage here with the purple flowers that picks up the purple there. Oh, we're organised. And there we go. So it's all all the papers behind are all Tim Holtz. A little um, birdie collage here. And I've tried to use numbers where I can. I quite like that wave going on. And it's what I have called a correspondence folio. So uh, some of them have got flaps that come over and tie. This one, I didn't put them on. I forgot. Okay, that's why they're not there, because I forgot about them. But actually, it works perfectly well without them. They don't need to be tied in. And there are three greetings cards in it. That one. Possibly my favourite, maybe. Um, with a little... I think that's a chickadee. We don't have them here, but I think it's a chickadee. Um, this one. And I know this is a bullfinch. We do have these here. And this one. I don't know what he is. <laughs> he came out of my book and I forgot to look what he was. But So those are the three uh, cards. I'm going to put the... I'm going to put that one at the front because, like I say, it's my favourite at the moment. might change. So they go in there. They're all sewn around and, as Keon would say, fancy. <laughs> um, and then here we've got three envelopes that go with them. Well, they don't go with them. They haven't got matching birds or anything. They're just three craft envelopes with a little, a tiny little collage down there so it doesn't interfere with your letter writing. That one I got carried away and put a butterfly there. But there's still plenty of room for your address. Little collage there. And the backs. Oh, 
that's still got its clips in. I'll show you show you how close to the wind I was sailing with this one. The backs of all of them have got the that part left just as craft and the rest is covered in coffee stained paper and they fit in this belly band which has got our blue tit on it. It's lovely, it's gorgeous. So if you can bring yourself to you can <laughs> you can send them out to your friends. They've got to be blinking special friends, I would say, before they get one of these. But, you know, I will send you, whoever buys it, I'll send you three more set, you know, a card and envelope, three more. So as, as you use them, the idea is that you can make new ones. So you'll, you'll always have your folio to keep them in and you can be making new ones to send out or keep or whatever you wish. So that is that uh, little correspondence folio. It's just plain on the back. Right. Can I give that to you, please? Because I'm just worried it might get caught in in the fray. And let's have a roll call yet. Uh, Judy. Hello, Judy. Did you catch the opening screen, Judy? Please tell me you did. Keong. Hi, Keong. Tammy. Hi, Tammy. Jen. Hello, Jen. Terry. Who? Terry. Terry, I haven't seen you for ages. Hi, Terry. Anita. Hello, Anita. Carol. Hi, Carol. Amanda. Hello, Amanda. Brenda. Hello, Brenda. Linda. Hi, Linda. Corinne. Hi, Corinne. Louise. Hello, Louise. I think that's everybody. Okay. Oh, well, if you see people sneaking on, perhaps you can tell me and we can give them a shout out. Right, so yeah, we've looked at that. Now then, what I have done um, yesterday, actually, was I have made two things that I think would go nicely into it. But I, I want two of them. So I've made one, and I'll make another one with you. Um, this, it's a pity Jania's not here because she likes a bit of bit of inkiness. But this is just, it, it's a fold over, but it's got journaling down there and journaling down there. So it's quite... It's a tag with extra journaling. It's a double tag. I don't know what else you could call it. That's the front. I'm really into these numbers at the minute. I can't see past them. Um, with just a little bit of collage. And that's a sticker, actually. Um, and they're the same. Just a little just easy peasy collage. But it looks quite nice. And journaling. So I'm not sure where I'm going to put this. I could put it there because I cut that short, as you can see. So that needs a pocket on it. So if I put a pocket on, I can pop that into the pocket, which I think would be quite nice. Uh, either way, I want two of each, because the thing is fairly symmetrical, apart from my boo-boo there. Um, these pockets here, you won't get much into, because the, they're glued along the bottom and the glue spreads, as you know. So there's no great thickness. I can't get any thickness in there. So that'll, that'll be something quite minimal. Then here and here. Yeah, I need something there. Obviously, I need to do something with this envelope. Something there and there. And then there's the back and the front. But I'm not considering them yet. So I could put that there. Make a little pocket or a belly band for it. Yeah, that might be quite nice. And I could have its mate there, or I could have its mate here. And it might be nice to mix them up a little bit. So this inky McDinky that I've got here, which is a, a tag in a pocket, obviously waiting to be uh, decorated. I don't think I want them together. I think they're a bit overpowering when you see them both together like that. So I'm wondering whether to make the pocket for this out of this here needs decorating um but that might be quite nice but anyways up i need to make another inky thing and another one of these so that's my uh, ambition today <laughs> that's what i'm setting out to do let's hope i get to the end of it right i think the first thing to do is to make our inky background because it needs to dry and stuff um, so, 
haven't got very much of this left. I've got a big, big coil and one piece of paper on it, but never mind. I'm going to use this whole thing. The uh, tag is just that little bit there. Pocket, just that little bit there. But if I've got an extra bit, so much the better I can use it in a collage or another pocket, whatever, you know, whatever I fancy, really. Um, and I enjoyed doing that yesterday. Just going to cut that bit off. You can keep these if you want to, you know. They're quite nice if you coffee stain them in uh, collages. So she thrown it in the bin, but they are. Right, so I'm just going to use my Distress Oxides for this. You can use your spray stains, uh, spray oxide. Um, you could use paints for it. And anything that will give you colour. But I'm using Distress Oxides. And I've got a whole raft of them here. Now I might not use them all, but I might. So starting with the palest, I've got Tattered Rose, Spun Sugar, Kitsch Flamingo, <laughs> Festive Berries, Fired Brick, and Crackling Campfire. Right, so I've, I'm, I'm in the red palette, or certainly the pink palette. Um, some of these I'm really not familiar with. Fired Brick and Crackling Campfire. I'm not sure which, that looks like it might be the darkest actually. I'm not really familiar with them, I don't use them a lot. But I'm going to give them a go today. So let's put them in some sort of order, lightest to darkest, and let's start off with the tattered rose. So the oxides are much creamier than the inks, and the main day-to-day -day difference, I guess, is that the oxides um, are opaque. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I was just second guessing myself there. The oxides are opaque, which means you can see it on that black. You can see it on the white. But if I was using ink, you wouldn't you wouldn't see it. So that you know it works on black paper. You'll see it on black paper. Right, so get your spray bottle out, add some water to that. And I'm just gonna give that a little bit of a waft. And here we go, let's get going. Louise wants to know what type of cards to use. It's mixed media. Um, I'll see if I can find a book in a second and show you because I've got another one. Isn't that lovely? It's lovely already. Sharon says hi. Hi Sharon. Hope you hope you're all right. Candice says hi. Candice, hello Candice. Everybody's been doing so well this week with the with the sketching, the drawing. I'm, I'm megally impressed. <laughs> right, so there we are. We've got a bit of a background colour on there. Nothing too radical. I'm going to dry that off. There's going to be a bit of this. Let's see if I can find that book first. Whoa. There might be an... Total of an orange here. Can you manage? Yeah, just about. I've just have, have to hang on yeah. to the bin, which has got a load of things on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I said. Th oh, yeah. Yeah, we're all right. We're alive. That's it. <laughs> um, it's a Dale Aroni one. Mixed media. Uh, does it tell me what? Th yeah, 250 GSM. I, I know that's going to mean nothing to you if you're in the States. But, uh, oh, 169 pounds. There you go. Quite a chunky monkey, isn't it? Uh, and it's it's A5, which means it measures 8.3 by 5.5. So it's just a handy size, really. Um, and it, it's quite good. Weighs exactly the same as me. Does it? D that book weighs the same as you. That's not true. Um, everything's dried now, so I'm just going to wipe it all off. So I don't want to dilute 
the next one, the next colour. Is that dry? I'm just going to give it a quick, quick waft. Now I've got this caught up in here. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't choreograph this. You could, you could not. Oh come on! Is um, Mike still in Ireland, Jen? Am I? Oh, he's doing a good job. There, hooray! That was a lovely photo we put up yesterday. Right, let's just give this a quick waft. Let's just pretend that last five minutes didn't happen. <laughs> Although we know it did. That's dry. I mean, it was pretty much dry when we when I started. Right, now I'm going to go for the spun sugar. The tattered rose is more of a peachy sort of colour. This is quite definitely pink. I don't know why I'm going down this family today. I just am. I made a little tag yesterday. I don't know why I made it either, but that's it. And it just looked nice with the sort of peaches and pinks. I'll pop that in somebody's order. I don't know why I made it. Just had the urge. I'm not going to wet this now. Just going to go in and see what I get. So I'm just dibbing and dabbing around on my paper. Oh yeah, and you can see. Maybe you can see. You'll see better when we get onto the darker colours, I think. But you've got to start with the light. You've got to build up a some nice depth to it. Jen Litt says hi. Hi. Hope you're okay. If I hold that there, can you sort of see it? Yeah, you can. It's it's coming on. You know, we're building up layer by layer. It's all about the layers. Did anybody catch Tim's um, Tim talk? <laughs> I think it was a couple of days ago now on, on Instagram. It was an absolute Tim talk about how you must be kind to people and feed your creative soul and and everything. <laughs> it, was, it was quite good. He's such a positive man, I think. Um, and has anybody got the... Watercolour crayons, pencils. pencils, not crayons, they're a different thing. The watercolour pencils, I haven't got any, but I will make a proviso and say I haven't got any yet. <laughs> sold out everywhere. So. They're sold out everywhere, are they? Yeah. People have got them then. Right, so let's just square that up a bit. Right, so I'm moving on to Kitsch Flamingo. I don't know if there's going to be... Oh, yeah, it looks like there should be enough colour difference there. Blimey, that is pink. That's so pink. Lona says hi. Hi, Lona. Just thinking about you this morning. Thinking I haven't spoken to Lona for a long time. Linda says she should be getting the three sets on Monday. Wow. To her. Oh, look at this. This is doing it. Crafting with Nadine says she's got them. What do you think of them? Please tell me. She's going to be doing a video. Oh, right. Is that the name of your YouTube channel, Crafting with Nadine? Then I can add you to my... Um, I can subscribe to you, in fact, is what I'm trying to say. Thank you to everybody who's subscribed to me of late. Seem to have had a bit of a bump in people subscribing. We're now over 4,000 people. How did that happen? I do not know. I'm very grateful to everybody who has subscribed. So you can see we're building up the layers. Look at that. There's some gorgeous little passages on there. We've done this with paint before. I think you watched me do this with paint. You can do it with anything, any any colour really that you can uh, make liquid. 
you know the one this one that I did I used uh, just spray stains you can see the rusty rusty hinge rusty hinge is just my favorite rusty hinge I love it I love enchanted mariner as well because that's the same color as our car <laughs> I'm sure that's why Tim brought it out because it's the same colour as our car, don't you think, Mr. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Well, he spies on us. Yeah. <laughs> right, should I go for the reds then? <sighs> Festive berries, crackling campfire, and fired brick. I mean, let's just do it. If we don't do it, we'll never know. Might make a real pig's ear of it, but we won't know if we don't try. Ooh. That's so juicy. So this is Festive Berries. This is the colour I use at Christmas, as well as Candied Apple, which I also like at Christmas. Coming from the person who doesn't make journals at Christmas. Right, let's just be a bit careful with this then. Just do a little bit of splotchiness. So, oh, oh, say. What do you think of that, Mr. Epp? It's nice, isn't it? Dexter would be impressed. <laughs> yeah. This wouldn't happen to Dexter because he'd have like polythene sheeting around. It's his day job. Yeah. Blood, Blood splatter. Yeah, I'm not. I don't think I'm going to put any more on there because um, I could wreck it. So, and I'm not going to put water on it because I like these little dry. The marks you get when it's dry. So if I got any more, any more paper anywhere? Yeah, that book. I've just got a whole book bit out for them's sake. I, do, I can't waste that. It's too, it's too much of it to waste. Terry loves rusty hinge too. Oh dear, Terry, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Goes beautifully with salvage patina and speckled egg and uncharted mariner it's that sort of rusty colour family verdigris. yeah verdigris type look i'm not doing anything with this i'm just picking it up because i just can't bear to just throw it in the bin i mean it's quite pretty isn't it some of these, you know, if you keep them, you can get really nice uh, die cuts out of them if you're making floral die cut Oh, leaves. Autumn leaves, say, for example. That's about all we get of that. Quite nice, though, isn't it? It's really nice, actually. Might go back to that one. That might turn out to be the good one. Bit nicer than that one but never mind we'll persevere because we're after the layers could you please get me your throat wasn't you before my throat dries up oh that'd be a shame wouldn't it yeah it would be a tragedy i'll tell you guys this morning i started crafting at six o'clock six o'clock this morning thank you So I could have things done, dried, um, and I wanted to finish the correspondence folio. Oh my goodness me. Well, we've had a bit of a week of it really, as you all know, if you're in the group. And it will be the Queen's funeral tomorrow, which I think... I think it might be pretty hard to get through actually I mean not that I knew the woman personally obviously I didn't but she was that sort of person that you felt you knew her um, and were just very very proud you know to have her it's hard to hard to get in the swing of saying God save the king that's pretty dry it's dry enough um, so I'm gonna go for this which I think is more orangey but that's okay yeah, it's definitely more orangey. <laughs> it's really orange, in fact. But never mind, let's see what happens. You've got to take a chance sometime, haven't you? Well, you never know. 
Oh, it's all right. Yeah, that is okay. If you can hear rustling, let me tell you what it is. It's Mr. F trying to quietly open a cough sweet, something like honey and lemon or something like that, which are revolting. I tried them instead of the throat lozenges I use, but they're foul. Yeah, that's all right. That's okay. We're coming along here. I'm going to put what's left on, on this second one here. Things like all watercolours are dry paler, don't they? Yeah, they do a bit, although these aren't so bad, the oxides, to be honest. Just going to add a little bit of water to this. Lisa, see if Lisa, I can... Hi, Lisa. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> I think I've got just about all I can get up off this. To be honest, it's nice. It's really nice. I really like it. Right, let's just mop that up, dry up where we are. Yeah, you can see that this has got something going on underneath. I'm not sure the camera will pick it up, but here you can see there's quite a lot of white, which I don't dislike. I, I still think that's really nice and you know for all that that crackling campfire was orange oh yeah really orange I think it looks okay I don't know what that is though Peg and Jim said hi. hello Peg and Jim thanks for joining us So this Tim Holtz little easy peasy journal is going to turn out to be very very different from the uh, blue one that we're doing. The blue one that we're doing is more sort of vintage. This has kind of hit you in the eye, to Timmy. Yeah, Lisa says just to let you know Arizona is having its highest rocket snake population. Oh my god. Oh. Oh no. I hate the thought of them. So thanks for letting me know anyway. So I will never go and stalk Timmy. Okay? Never. Just in case. Just on the off chance. So I've done crackling campfire, haven't I? So now fired brick. Give it a go, shall we? Looks a bit similar to the other one, but... How do you know if you don't try? And if you're going to try something, alive is the place to do it. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. If it all goes horribly wrong, you might as well be showing everybody. <laughs> yeah, there's not enough difference, I don't think, between those colours. I'm just getting kind of more of the same, really. Very autumnal colour, I will say that. See what I can pick up on the spare sheet. That's about all I can get there. It's nice though. Right, let's just wipe this off and then we'll go into something really darker. We'll go to a much darker place. Well, I was thinking of going to Rusty Hinge, actually, but I might have enough orange on there now. I'm going to go, anyway, um, down the plan that I had, which is this one, which is my Grand Espresso. Now, that really is dark. So let's see what happens here. It might be it might be awful, it might be really horrible. Time will tell. If it is, hey ho, it's a sheet of paper. 
Peg says that looks like it would make beautiful scarlet maple leaves. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It, it actually does. So I'm, I'm, I am just going to dip this. See what happens. And I'm going to fold it that way and dip it that way. See what we get. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, that's better, isn't it? Yes, that is better. Actually, I'm getting some really... It's mixing because, you know, they do mix. The, as soon as you put water on them again, they, they, they become active again. But if you're the sort of person that doesn't want to use oxides because they go dull, they oxidise, I remember some time ago promising to show you a technique or a, project, a product that would bring them back to life. So I'm going to do that today, but I need them to be dry first. That could do with a bit more, couldn't it? something else and I'm wondering if what I need is something like vintage photo to be honest let's just pull all of that up as much as we can get what happens is what happens there we go nice 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 let's clean that up Yeah, what Tim was saying is Tim talked the other day. I mean, there was lots of takeaways from it, you know, good positive vibes. But, you know, if you don't like something, it's just because it isn't finished yet. And I quite like that idea. You know, you just keep throwing stuff at it and eventually something will stick that you like. But occasionally you do get projects that doesn't matter what you do with them. They're just not right. You know, somewhere along the line, you've added the wrong colour or I don't know. It, they just don't, they're not right and if that happens don't beat yourself up about it it's just life just walk away keep it though because you never know what what's what looks bad to you today might you know be just what you're looking for tomorrow like i say this if you die cut these jen at some stage sent me some of those um autumn leaves the sort of partially skeletonized leaves die cut and uh, she'd made a beautiful background in, in this sort of colour. I think she had some greens on it as well. Mm, that might be an idea. I don't know whether to try Vintage Photo or Rusty Hinge. There's quite a lot of reds and stone. I might try Vintage Photo. Miss Drav, could you do me a favour? Could you just... Go to Andy and get a in this mid, middle drawer vintage photo, please. Spray, yeah. Thank you very much. Right. Let's give this a whirl. This is just ink. It's not an oxide, so... It won't sit on top of the other colours uh, like the oxide would, but I'll give it a go. I'll try it on my good piece, which is rapidly becoming my not so good piece. Pig tissue reminds itself it's only paper. It's only paper at the end of the day. And you will have learnt something. Yeah, I think we're starting to get something quite nice going now. Mm. 
Yeah, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm just wondering, talking about the leaves that Jen sent me, just wondering whether to put either blue on here, which would look quite nice, or green. I don't know. That's turned out really nicely. Um, blue or green? Or a neat colour in between? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I know. What do you think? What should I do? It's a puzzle, isn't it? I could put something like salvage patina on, you know, as a complete contrast. But it might not work, in which case I'm snookered. Yeah, you could put something off. So you've got four to go out. Yeah, but I want to get a pocket and stuff out of here, so... Well, green would make it look more naturalistic. Let's have a look through the drawer. The blue would make it look more metallic. -y. Milled lavender, no. Pumice stone, dusty concord. Mm, that might look all right. Ground espresso, shaded lilac, gathered twigs, rustic wilderness. Mm, okay, let's leave that out. Uh, dusty concord, forest moss. It's a nice dark colour. Brushed corduroy and walnut stain. Lucky Clover. Oh, I hate that colour. Yeah, it's not the nicest green. That no. Frayed Burlap. Frayed Burlap. Ripe Persimmon. Aged Mahogany. I've probably got enough of that sort of thing going on already. Another Lucky Clover. Ripe Persimmon. Uh, dried Marigold. Brushed Corduroy. Forest Moss. Forest Moss is a nice colour. Never mind. Uh, right persimmon, abandoned coral, salvaged patina. Might leave that out and have a little play with that. Festive berries, spun sugar, mold lawn. Mold lawn? Mm. Slightly brighter than that one. Yeah. I don't know. I'm still liking wilderness. Okay. Walnut stain, shabby shutters, one of my favourites of all times. And another lucky clover. Because you never use it. I know, brushed corduroy, speckled egg, which I love. Evergreen bout, which I really love. Uh, dried marigold, ground espresso, another brushed corduroy. Pumice stone, ooh, fossilised amber. Ooh. Let's leave that out. Squeezed lemonade, right, that's my oxides. So, let's have a think then. I, I don't know, you know, I think the foss I'm feeling fossilised amber, but am I just going to end up with a load of orange? Oh, I'm sorry, guys. If you've tuned in to learn anything today, forget it. I'm going to try a little bit of fossilised amber, maybe just on half of this piece. do love fossilised amber and the other colour that I really love is wild honey. I love that too. It's a bit of a chameleon colour actually, I think. Wild honey. Need a bit more water on there. Uh, right, so I am just going to do half. Half-ish. Unless, nice. Unless it looks <laughs> nice. Mm, no, not so much. No, it, it, well, <laughs> mm. no, I'll leave that. I'm not, I'm not overly keen. I'm not overly keen. That's an experiment that didn't work out, but if you don't try, you don't learn, do you? Um, what else have I got? I'm saving the green to last because I think it will work. Either that or it's going to mix with the red and just make mud, which is a real distinct possibility. 
I don't know if this is, I don't know what's going to happen with this. I haven't got a clue. This is really left field. It's left field. On a lefty board. On a lefty board. Let's just spread that out a little bit just in case. Okay, let's try it on this one. What do we got to lose? Mm, it's just going brown, isn't it? It's just going brown. Nothing is happening to it. It's just mixing with the other colours that are there and going brown. Oh well. That experiment didn't work, did it? No. Nope. Just going to give these a bit more of a dry. I mean, they will come off as soon as they're in touch with water, but give them every chance that I can. They need some more dark on it as well, I've decided. They need more ground espresso. It's funny, isn't it? This one's so light. And yet, apart from the first two very light layers that we put on, it's had exactly the same as this. Well, obviously it's now got fossilised amber or whatever it is. Yeah, I don't know. It's not so bad. Not so bad. Okay, I think they're dryish. So let's go for it then with the uh, rustic wilderness. I'm just worried I'm going to end up with mud here. Just mud. <laughs> it's just mud. Yeah. Mm. Let's just clean that up, put a bit more down, have a go on this one. Yeah, that's the problem. Red and green. When you mix red and green, you get brown. So I don't know why I'm expecting any other outcome, really. Well, I wasn't, was I? There is a little cast of green to that. No, not so much really. Right, I'm going to dry them and then I'm going to go in with the ground espresso again. Get a bit of good dark into there. I'll dry them off. Yeah, the experiments haven't really worked, but it's, I think it's good for you to see experiments. That don't really work. I'll put my hand up. I am the person that will experiment live. <laughs> you all know that. The thing is, if I'd used paints, which probably would have been a better option, the Distress paints, once they are dry, they're dry. They're not going to pick up any of the other colours. Um, when you put the next layer on. That's the beauty of the the paints. So if you want to try this um, and you want loads and loads of layers, I'd go for the paint. I do love my paints. But I wanted to give this a go. I do quite like it when you start getting depth, you know bits of bits that look deeper. Okay. So let's. Um, I don't know whether to go in with black on that one. Let's do it. We've got to lose. I want something really dark. 
and the only thing I can think of is black. Now this is either very brave or stupid. Mr. F's going for the stupid. I'm going to take a sweep. Everybody else say stupid? Oh, now you see. Wasn't so stupid. That was not so stupid. Yeah. Beginning to get some depth going here, which I like. Yeah, that's brought that back from the brink of going in the bin. Yeah, that's better. Um, on here, I'm going to put some rusty hinge. I know we've got lots of orange already. Just want to give it a go, see what happens. I love rusty hinge. Oh, look at it, it's just the best. Okay, so the bit of clean up paper has actually turned out to be 100 times better than the other paper. That's okay. I can live with that. Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Let's dry that off and add a bit more ground espresso to it and then I'm done. Whatever it turns out like. It's <laughs> whatever it turns out like. I think I'll just, I'll leave that one and I might come back in with the Dina Wakely gloss sprays. Not today, I think I made you sat through enough, <laughs> enough today. But I will have a go at that. That is not finished, it's not dead to me yet. Well, that rusty hinge just poked this up a bit anyway. This is supposed to take like 10 minutes at the start of the live. <laughs> I may have taken slightly longer. Actually, it has got a nice bit of green in there. Right, so I'm just going to go with a ground espresso, see what happens, and then whatever I've got, is that's what I've got. The Kuhn says it's fancy, it'll look great with the malts. In the park says it looks like a timmy background. Oh. And Jen loves the rusty hinge. Yeah, you've got to love rusty hinge. I absolutely love it. Right, so I'm bending it like this and I'm just going to dip. Keep moving it across and dip. Move it across, across, across. Yeah, I've got some lines which I could do with that. So then I'm going to fold it the other way. Dip, dip, dippy, dip, dip. Yeah, I don't much like those lines there. Let's go back into it and see if we can get rid of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Happy enough with that. Happy enough. Could have been better. Could always be better. But, like I say, if, if you want to play, I'd get your distress paints out. You had a different effect. It's not the same, but it's definitely more manageable. And, you know, if I wanted to do something with that now, I could get my distress paints out and go over the top. Go over the top of it. But I'll show you in a minute what to do to seal this before you could go in with your distress paint. So 
so I like that the wilderness looks good yeah it does actually it's amazing how it's shown up brave <laughs> yeah brave <laughs> Well, thanks for your support, guys. Yeah, if you wanted the colours to pop, you could clear and boss the die cuts afterwards. For sure. And they'd look great. But once I've got this properly dry, I'm going to show you a product. I'm going to do my Timmy sales pitch again. That works especially well, I think, on oxides. But on anything that you want to seal, before you go on to put something else on top of it. You might all know about it already. Right, so that's perfectly dry and actually it's it's kind of nice. There's, there's bits of it that are bits of it that are nice. It's a nice bit there, isn't it? Um, right, I'm amazed Judy hasn't been on that she's seen some face or a goat or something. In it. <laughs> she always sees things. Right, so I'm just waiting for this to cool down just a touch. And I'm looking for my brush. Here we go. Right, so the, the product I want to show you is called um, Micro Glaze Distress. I can't work out where to put my finger. There, micro, tiny micro letters. Distress micro glaze and it comes in these weeny little pots that are one fluid ounce. So you don't get much, but you don't need much. And if you've got no fingernails, you can go in and get it out. But all that happens with me is it gets stuck under my fingernails. So I'm just going to use the end of my brush here. Just get a little bit. That's probably too much. Then get my finger, take a little bit off that and then just rub that in. And I hope you can see that it actually makes, it just brings it alive. Brings all the colours up and they all pop. I think because this is still a little bit warm, it's sinking into my paper. So it might be a good idea just to leave it till it's a bit cooler. But it, it just absolutely brings it to life. It does leave a sheen on your work, but it does seal it. And then you can go ahead and add other things to it without fear of setting the water reactive pigments and dyes off. Because at this stage, before I put this on, anybody, you know, in 20 years' time could come along and spill water on it. <laughs> like it's still, people could still want it in 20 years. Uh, in 20 years' time, spill water on it and it would still react. So, you know, it's a good idea to preserve, I suppose, your work like this. Uh, and it also means that you can go over the top I could go on there now with my Distress paint and I wouldn't move what's underneath it. Louise wants to know, can you stamp on it after the glaze? Yeah, as long as you use Archival or Stays On, obviously, or the Versafine Claire. Use something that's oil-based, um, not uh, Distress, not Distress Oxide or Ink. You've got no chance of getting that to stick, it just won't. Yeah, does it work with the ink too, or just the oxide? No, the ink as well. Yeah, the ink as well. It's just, it, it really does bring them bring them up. I mean, I don't, don't know if you can see a sort of difference, but it, it's... It's hard on our camera, but... Yeah, it's quite remarkable how it actually so brings them up. You see a bit of the other way. Yeah, the sheen sort of dies down. Once the sheen dies down, it might take an hour or something like that. Then come in with a dry, clean, soft cloth and buff it. <coughs> and you'll really see it then. It's gorgeous. It's a, it's a really good product. 
And one that I don't see very many people talk about, and yet it's like magic. It's a magic thing. Okay. Yeah, I'm super excited, and it's on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Tammy thinks they look Halloween. Yeah, I guess they do look Halloween, Tammy. Pumpkin, pumpkin colours. Yeah. Especially this that's gone, all the black's gone blue, which is quite sort of wicked out to blue. I don't know if you're seeing blue, but I'm seeing blue. That might be quite nice actually once it's got the microglaze on. Mm, I'm so tempted to do it. Shall I do it? Yeah. <gasps> I'm going to just do a strip down the middle and then see if you can see any difference. Louise says she brought that little jar but she'd forgotten what it was for. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's the thing, isn't it? You know, we've all got pots of goodness, you know, crackling glaze and all sorts of stuff. And you watch people doing a demonstration, you think, oh, I need that. Then you get it, and by the time you've got it, actually, you've forgotten how to, how to use it. So I'm just rubbing that in with my finger. I don't know if you can see what a difference that's made. I mean, that was the same colour as that, and it's now rich. You can see I haven't spread it on very evenly, but when you come back to buff it, it'll be fine. So, you know, you can do as Lorna says, of course you can, um, die cut them and emboss them, and you'll get a nice uh, glaze on it that way as well. I've got way too much product on here. Like way too much. But anyway, that's that. And I know I promised to show you that I don't know, three months, six months ago. And I never did get round to it. So now I have. There we are. That's going to take a while to dry because it's just sticky with product. Shaz says hi. Hi, Shaz. She's going to watch you on back up later. Ah, right, okay. I hope you're doing all right. So yeah, I mean, I hope that you can see or you can tell that there's an enormous difference between what it did look like and what it looks what it looks like now. And I'll just pop them to the side, let them dry, put my little pot of magic away. Um, I really could do with washing my hands, but hopefully there's some wet wipes somewhere. Yeah, here they are. Yeah, it's very oily. The other thing that you can use, and I saw Auntie, uh, Auntie Artie May is talking about this the other day, and she's absolutely right, is uh, water-based varnish. So for any of you, um, just came back to my mind when Shaz popped on there, for any of you that paint furniture and finish refinish furniture, if you uh, are using chalk paint, then very often you use a water-based varnish over the top and that will do a very similar job, actually. What you don't want to be doing is using anything that's um, acetate or anything like that. Acetone, even. Um, but there's plenty. Um, what do you call that? Those people who water-based varnish. Polyvine. Got. Polyvine, yeah. Here in the UK, I don't know, it probably is in the US as well. But there's also general finishers in the US who are an excellent paint company. Um, absolutely excellent uh, and they do uh, a water-based varnish as well and of course it's cheaper if you're buying buying it in a gallon you know what I mean it works out a quart or whatever works out much much cheaper right that's probably about as clean as I'm going to get them for the moment well it's not for crafting yeah as soon as you say crafting you know it's just price just goes shoots up doesn't it there we go. Right. Like ordering a cake, it's a fiver. Order a wedding cake, it's 500 quid. Yeah, I know. It's ridiculous. Right, let's just pop my oxides to one side for the moment. I'm tempted to say that wasn't a success, and yet when I look at them, I, I, I'm, I'm quite liking them. I think they're okay. Right, so what were we going to do? Yeah, we're going to make that. Well, that's in the process of making. So let's make this then. So I need a piece of paper. Let's just cut this blooming spring off. Or coil, I don't suppose it's a spring. And that can go in the bin. 
so what size have I got it? I've just cut a smidge off the top and each of the this part here measures three and a half inches. Everywhere is now really greasy. Three and a half, so that's seven in total, isn't it? Which means I can't do it on that one. Yeah, the reason is if you could use them on top of chalk pencils or pan pastels, but I would say not. I don't know. Is the honest answer, I don't know. The problem with chalks and pan pastels, etc., is that it's sort of loose. You, you got to spray it really. Yeah. If you've got to put anything on, like air spray or yeah, or the proper stuff. That that's the thing. It's it's sort of loose, isn't it? Yeah. If you've got to apply it with your finger, it's just going to smudge. Yeah. I mean, I'm very interested to hear. You know, if you have a go, I'm really interested to hear how it goes. I'm just going to take a little bit off here, and I'll give you the overall measurements in a second. Right, so it measures seven inches by just light of five and three quarters. And we're going to fold it in half and it will be our um, little double card. So let's just fold this over in half. If you want to stitch, stitch. I'm not stitching this one. Uh, just because I'm doing it as a live, that's all. Um, if I was doing it myself, I would stitch it because I don't know. Timmy just looks great with stitching, doesn't he? Um, I'm gonna. I'll just use this ink, the ground espresso, and my dauber, and let's just go around. Oh, hang on a minute. Do I want to do that? I'm just gonna put some gesso on first. Yeah, I'm going to put some gesso just on this bit and this bit. These bits are going to be covered up. So let's just get the gesso out. There we go. Um, and I did have a brush somewhere. I'm not sure it's still alive or not. Yeah. And I also had a trowel, yeah. Let's go with the trowel first. Trowel, a pallet knife. So I'm just gonna get some out, put it on there. And I'm just gonna spread it over here. This I can tell you, I haven't got a clue what I'm doing with. I just thought it'd be quite nice to put some gesso on it. It's one of those lives today, isn't it? It's just one of those lives. You know, usually I am prepared to the back teeth. Today, not so much. Just see what happens. Ordinary crafting day in my crafting space. There we are. So it's not covered completely. I don't want it to be covered completely. And I'm just going to go onto the inside bit as well. So just try and get a bit of a sort of uneven coverage. Keon says a gesso trowel. A <laughs> gesso trowel, I know. <laughs> just going to plaster the walls, dear. Oh, what are you using? Oh, gesso. And she has like the off the cuff lines. I know, but Charles, you've seen it too often where it goes wrong. <laughs> and I look like a proper Charlie. Telling people, you know, whatever you're doing, don't do what I've done. Because <laughs> it doesn't work. Right, so I've got a little bit of gesso. I don't even know if you can see that. It's, it's n not a nice even coverage. It's a bit lumpy and bumpy and bits missing, etc, etc. And there I've picked a bit of black up by the looks of it. But that's fine. But now I've got that gesso there, I've had an idea. <laughs> I'm going to put the lid on my gesso because I can, I just can see disaster ahead. Disaster in my 
future. <laughs> um, I'm going to get this brush, which is not the ideal brush for this, but never mind. We'll proceed. And I'm going to water this down like Billy O. Might even need to water it a bit more. I'm going to get my. <laughs> so I still haven't given up on, and I, and I don't know if that's going to work. It's not. No, I might have to get a splatter brush out. Do we have such things? I think we do. But I don't know where. Yeah, we've got a proper yeah. splatter brush somewhere. Oh, that's it. <laughs> I don't know how these work because I've never used it before. I think you just must load it up. That might be a bit... Oh, no. Oh, look at this. Oh, Colorado Springs is going to get nice and... Nice and splattered. Sp <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ski season. Oh, looky, look. Oh, that splatter brush works a charm. I've just remembered I haven't buffed my... Um, <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Let's see if I can get loads on and get some big splats. No, it's more like snow. But that's okay. That's okay. Bit of white. Um, yeah. I mean, all the good drops landed here. Why is that? I don't know. I know, but it's going to go everywhere. No. No, it's just... It's just kind of... snow. I, I think... I think my, my mixture is too thin, you know what I mean? It's hasn't seen paint for a while. So I'll just leave them to dry anyway. That was just another something else that didn't work. <laughs> yeah. Could I give you those, please? Just dump them in some um, water. I'll sort them. This towel's going to be ready for the washer, isn't it? Right, there we go. I don't know whether to put some black gesso on here as well or not. No, I think I'll just ink it. I think I've had a bit of a catastrophe round by my feet. The things are falling over. <laughs> it's a madhouse today. It's a madhouse today. Right, yeah, I'm going to use ink. Uh, which colour ink shall I use? Or oxide, I'm not fussed. Uh, any which way, let's just take the acrylic off that. The gesso. There we go. Um, shall I use one of these I've already got out, do you think? I quite like that. I do love fossilised amber. Shall I use that in Rustic Wilderness? Well, let's give it a go. Let's see what happens. Get some brushes out. I washed all my brushes the other day. I mean, they're stained, but they're clean. So let's go with fossil... No, yeah, fossilised amber as a starter. A lot of this is going to be covered up, so it doesn't really matter. Now, when you've got gesso on your paper, the ink just glides on so beautifully and you can move it around even when it's when it's down there you can move it so you know when you start off with ink and you forget to tap it off and you end up with a really heavy bit that doesn't matter when you've just sold it because you can just go back and move it it's magical it's totally magical uh, I just want a piece of paper to put down there because I don't want to get ink over that side particularly and I'm just going to not put so much on this side. There you see, you can see the bits where the gesso is and where the gesso isn't. And I love that effect. Those of you 
like poor Charles that's watched me for ages. I've seen me do this innumerable times, but I really, really like it. So that's that. Let's go now to the... Let's go to the wilderness. this one. I don't think I've ever used the Rustic Wilderness, apart from just now. I'm heartened to see so many of you having a go at the uh, sketching, the drawing. Today obviously there's not going to be one put up, but that doesn't mean to say you can stop practicing. Carry on practicing. So I'm just just using my wilderness just to make a nice blend. A little bit up in this corner. There we are. It's so easy to blend when you've got gesso on. Oh, it's a real dream. So there we are. That's that one. Let's go back to this one. And just blend them. See what happens when we blend them. I don't know. You'd think we'd get a bit of a blue, wouldn't you, going on? Yeah, maybe we are actually getting a bit of a blue. I love this streak down the middle where there's no gesso, so the ink's clinging onto the paper. Yeah, most of this will be covered up, so <laughs> don't worry about it. So there we are. Now I just want some of my uh, ground espresso around the outside just to kind of frame it. I've lost the lid of my green. Here it is. Um, so somewhere I think I've got some ground espresso oxide. There we are. Just, I'm just wiping that up. that stuff that micro glaze on it right so I just want to come in from the outside and just give this a bit of a frame like I say we'll be adding stuff to it so I don't think it was strictly necessary to do all this to it but but you know There we go. Maybe it needs just another little bit down here. All right, now this one. Hmm. Let's do the three sides, then I'll worry about the one that's joining on in a minute. I really don't know why I'm spending all this time doing this because you're really, really not going to see it, right? I'm going to fold that like that and do this edge. There we go. Right, so we've got our little two card thingy which took way more you know there's no earthly reason it should take you should be doing all that to it I don't know what I don't know what I'm doing that for right there we go now then I've got some 
book pages here, book page. It's just ordinary common or garden book page that I got out of my glue book, the one that I used to glue. I have got, if you watch Keung's uh, last video that she did, it was an unboxing video from uh, my creative studio. And one of the things that was in it, in the uh, June one, were all these collage papers. And they're just gorgeous. So I'm going to use a bit of that and a bit of that and just cover up all that bit that we put up, <laughs> we put all that hard work into. So I want a piece that's, I'm just going to use my ruler to tear with. If you've got a tear ruler, use that. Um, I'm just using my Timmy ruler. I want it about there. And about there. I try and preserve some of the <laughs> some of the background. And then here I want this that's gonna go where's it open there? So that's gonna go to this side I think. So when you get it where you want it, just tear it off. a bit of that yellow to show so right there we are we've got two pieces to put down like I say I want a little bit of that yellow to show otherwise it really was pointless excellent so I want to ink around this but inking around this very very light collage paper is extremely difficult so what you need to do is get something that's a bit firmer that might be firm enough behind it so you can um, get the ink on because it, ju it just it just bends over doesn't want to know so too, put, floppy. too floppy yeah so just put a piece of sturdier don't have to be card or anything this is just paper just something behind it so you can actually get it inked without it just folding over and looking like a crumpled mess which is how I feel. A crumpled mess. I've done loads today, Mr. F, and nothing's really worked very well. Well, Catkin has assumed the role of king of the house. I know we have a new king in the country, but we certainly have a new king in this house. Uh, he spent a couple of days, I would say, looking round for Bob, see what was what on earth had happened. Um, and then he got over that quick sticks and became the boss. So they're going to go like that. I also want um, my stamp, this stamp here. And I want, I want to stamp, it's just a, a rectangular stamp. And I just want to stamp that because I want to put some numbers on it. You know I want some numbers on it. So that's going to go there. I'm going to bring that there, like that. And that's going to go there. So you'll see the three. Yeah, right. Let's stick this down first. That's that's what to do. Where's my glue book gone? Here it is. Oh my goodness, the mess on the floor is just... Okay. There we go. That's sufficient. It's the loveliest paper, this. It's light and it's got text all over it. It's just perfect, perfect, perfect for collage. So let's get it the right way up. Pop that there. Mr. F, could you see if I've got such a thing as a clean Timmy towel? Because this is like, it's it's no good. Dirty Timmy. It's dirty Timmy. Right, so I need to get this onto a block. And as you all know, my blocks are so filthy 
that I have to <laughs> glue them on. Oh, thank you. Judy, did you see the beginning of the live stream? Did you see? I can pop it back up if you like. Yeah, stick it back up just for a second, just in case um, she missed it. You won't be able to speak when it's over there because there's no... Can you do one? We were on our holidays. We were in the Caribbean. We heard that Jania had been, so we thought we would go. <laughs> so I packed up my journal. Mr. F packed up his whack whack in his toolbox, and off we went. <laughs> it's brilliant. Right, so I'm going to stamp this here, just coming over the edge of there, like that. Stamp that down. I'm using Versifying Claire in a colour called Glamorous. Mm. Glamorous. So there we are. We've got a, a, a square, just a outline. Rectangle. Rectangle, yes, even. And I want to put that. Oh, I might have to lose a bit of that. I want to come down because I want to get some numbers in there. Judy says that's priceless. I'm glad you're having fun with them. What do you mean, having fun with them? We are them. <laughs> we are them, Trudy. We are. We have become them. That's Miss P without a Showtime makeup on. <laughs> yeah, but with my pearl earrings in. Pearl earrings. Right, so I'm going to pop that there. I just, I still want to see this edge of that, of that there. So yeah, I'm going to glue that. Bear in mind that will still be wet. So it's a little while for sort of oil-based ones to dry. So be careful of that. You can smear it easy as anything. I'm not saying that's perfectly dry even now. Where is my glue? Anybody seen it? Oh yeah. It's going to take me a week to get this lot back to normal. Well, it is normally a bit of a mess, but normally sort of uh, ordered, a kind of ordered chaos. At the moment, it's just chaos. There we go. So I just want that there, like that. Lovely. New Timmy Towel to the rescue. I don't think I've left enough space there for um for for my numbers. Well, wouldn't you know it? Of course, I wouldn't. Um, I like it anyway, but I, I did have the idea of putting numbers there. As it goes, I might just have to put some a little bit of ephemera. Um, let's see what I've got. Let's see what I can use. That's quite nice. Not the right colour. Let's see what that one looks like in there. No, it's, it is the right colour. It's too near. Too close. Let's try that one then. Yeah, quite like that there. That's okay. I can live with that. So let's just ink around there and stick that down. I do like putting the rectangles in, you know, in different coloured inks. I don't know, it just adds so much. And, you know, I mean, I intended for that to have numbers in it. It obviously isn't going to have numbers in it because I didn't put it up high enough. But I think they look really good when they're... So yeah, that, that's that's great. I like that. That's fine. Um, so I, I now need something, something down here, I think, 
just to balance that. Now I could put my numbers down there. Yeah, I could. I've got I've got more rectangles somewhere. Where are there? That one. I'd get a number in there. I definitely would. And that would balance that out really quite nicely. Let's do that. Let's do that. It's good sometimes when things don't work out, isn't it? Get a second bite at the cherry. These are uh, darkroom door stamps. Let's see if I can get it for you. Darkroom door frame stamp. There. It says matching stencil available. I haven't got the stencil. It's got, and you get six three I don't know why you get three of each one is ample sufficiency but um, you get three of each three small three large right so let's pop this here <laughs> and see what's what shall we <laughs> oh, if this works that would be great yeah that's all right that's okay I just clean my stamp, you know, the way I am, super vigilant about my stamps. <laughs> I wish I was. I so wish I was. Right, let's let's put a number there then, shall we? Right, just get Tiny Tim out. And a bit of black card. Um, and the numbers out of this one. Which is this. Whoops, there you go. What does it say? Double six O oh, trouble one. There you go. And just a note. Called just a note. Um, and I haven't used any of the letters out of it actually. Mr. F got it for me on uh, eBay. But I do love the, the numbers, they're great. How about a seven? Should we put a seven on it? I quite fancy putting an eight on it. I don't know why. Let's see if I can find an eight. Whee. No, I can find. Oh, yeah, there it is. Eight. The lady that we bought these from kindly had separated them all already. So they're all in lowercase, uppercase, numbers, and then there's all like, you know, the ampersands and hashtags and all that, which was very nice of her to do that. Of all the things that I have actually bought of late, this Tiny Tim has got to be my best buy. I use it so often. Whee. So there's my eight. There's my... Uh, oh, it's come off the side. See? Do things in haste. Never works. It doesn't, does it? Really. When you do think, when you're trying to be quick, it just doesn't work. But yeah, I love my little tiny Tim. It means that I use many more die cuts than I would have used uh, previously. I, there's just no way that I'd get up, walk to the the big shot. And I just wouldn't do it. I know I wouldn't. Whereas this, when I'm looking through my dies, if it'll go in the tiny Tim, <laughs> there's a possibility it'll get used. If it doesn't, it hmm, goes back in the drawer. Fortunately, all the wildflower ones, well, most, I think, of the wildflower ones do go in the tiny tin. Right, where was I when I was rudely interrupted by myself? Um, yeah, that's fine there. I like that there, actually. Nice bit of balance going on here. Tweezers. Glue. And then I'm going to stick a sticker on it. There we go. And as you know, anybody who watches me regularly will know, I get all my stickers from Ali. There we go. I quite like that. But then again, I'm in a sort of numbering mood at the moment. There we go. 
Now let's have a look at my stickers, the ones that are the appropriate size. Let's see if we can find one we like. I can't remember which book. Oh, this book. Hooray! Um, so I've got I've got quite a lot. But I just want one basically that's gonna fit in there. I think that one might there. That one definitely would. Yeah, let's let's do that one. I like that one. Looks like the Tim Holtz wallflower. You know that beautiful rose that he's got in the wallflower one. That look it look it reminds me of that. Oh, and the good thing about this putting them in here is you can pull the top off. It's not going to do it now. Yeah. Oh. No, it's not going to do it because I want it to. Let's push it down and then. There you go. It just peels the backing off like that. It's like magic. And then you can pick that up. <laughs> you can. Like that. And then you just stick it down. It's quite magical. Let's just pop that there, shall we? There we are. So there's the front of our little collage piece. Um, I could go on, but I'm actually going to stop there because it's been stressful. I'm stressed. Um, and you can see what's going to happen, can't you? You know, I'm going to do something pretty similar in there and then I'm going to put um, journaling paper there and there. And then we'll have two of those to put into our journal next time. Uh, next time we're doing it. But I'm going to stop because it's just been one of those days, hasn't it? There we go. I think that looks quite nice. I'm quite pleased with that, actually. I, it's a collage. It's fairly simple. It's very simple, actually. But it works. does the job. So that's it from me today and this whole mess that I have created. And I don't even know if it was worth it. Um, I think Mr. F's been buffing those, actually. Have you been buffing these? Have you been buffing these? Uh, I've half buffed that one. Half buffed it. I don't know it. if you can tell which. Well, this buffed. looks better than this one, but that feels nicer. That one's been fully buffed. Can we buff the other off? No, I'm, I'm going. That looks quite like constellation, doesn't it? It looks like a galaxy far, far away. Looks like uh, one from Hubble rather than James Webb. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you can see what what happens. You just keep adding adding inks or not. It depends the look that you're going for. And here we have a really, I think that's pretty. I quite like that, actually. Um, that we overwork because we put gesso on it, then we put ink on it, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I like it anyway. So that's what we've achieved today, which is pretty, quite close to nothing, really. <laughs> And, um, oh, well, thank you, Linda. I uh, can't make my mind up whether to buy Tim's collector dies with the money envelope. Do you have it? You have, yes, of course I have it. <laughs> um, with a money envelope, which, what does it come with? Let's have a look. Uh, this one. Yeah, yeah, I like it. It's it, it's got nice numbers in it. It's got a ticket shaped die. Um, yeah, some windows, etc. A star, which is always useful. That's that's a good one. This one with a tab on the top, and the like the um, thing to label the front of your journal or a page or whatever. I like this one. That's possibly my favourite out of those. Um, I love I love that alphabet that he brought out at the same time, and this one I use this one an awful lot. Um, those arrows are just so handy, and this arrow 
when you cut it, you get that arrow, that arrow as the uh, waist. It's a, another really useful one. I don't, I don't I don't know which to tell you actually. They're all they're all fabulous. Yeah, I think that one I would say is probably the one that gets the most use. You know, it's got these words here: specimen, collect, filed, archive, recorded. Yeah, they're all nice though. That was a that Sizzix Chapter Three release was the best release ever. I think it was glorious. Right. Okay. Thank you, Linda, for the folder one. Yeah, the folder. One. Yeah, I think that's my favourite. I like the tab that came with that as well. Oh, thanks, Peg. I don't know what you've learned from me today. He learned how to um, spend a couple hours doing nothing, I suppose. <coughs> I do. I think I probably like that one, but then I like the rusty hinge. And I think when this is finished, it's going to look quite in keeping with our Timmy project that we're doing and provide us with a bit of journaling as well. So there you go, guys. What more can I say? I promise, promise, promise that next week I will be a lot more organised than this week. Doing things like this, it's very difficult to get organised because you really have no way of knowing how it's going to go, to be honest. Um, but I've shown you about the, the microglaze. Um, and that's about it, I think. Sorry. It's been really nice to share some time with you, though. Thank you very much indeed. I'm off back to the Caribbean. <laughs> I just popped over here just to do the live, but I'm back to the Caribbean now um, in my dungarees, my paint splattered dungarees and my handbag, my paintbrush and my glue. So thanks for watching. Thank you very much for watching and take care, everybody, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now. Bye. Be safe, be happy. See you soon. Bye.